vida Doy lo bueno, soy tan pobre que otra cosa puedo dar Pasará más de mil años Muchos más Y no sé si tenga amor la eternidad Pero allá tal como aquí En la boca llevarás Sabor a mí Sabor a mí First of all, um, many people don't realize that um, my mom was a very famous singer of Spanish boleros back in the day. Um, she was very popular amongst American audiences. And one day, Columbia Records, uh, head of a a guy named Goddard Lieberson, came down. My mom was recording and said, Edie, you speak Spanish, don't you? And my mom said, of course I do. He said, well, I just signed a group called the Trio Los Panchos, and I think you guys would be making great records together. And no one ever in this country had seen a, a, a white pop star deliver these beautiful uh, Latin American songs uh, with such elegance and grace and sensuality and exploded in the United States. And likewise, nobody in Latin America saw a singer fronted with the Los Panchos. And so it was important to me to uh, make this album to honor that and to remind people how amazing she was. This album, um, I wanted to basically share with my mom everything that I've learned my entire life as a musician and a composer, and at the same time, uh, pay homage to the beautiful genre of bolero. So I went about um, approaching the songs as they were originally presented, uh, percussion, a little piano, a little guitar. There's no piano in the original, but I started building my own rhythm tracks. Um, but staying in the boleto front and center. And then once I got a feel for how the song was evolving, then I would introduce different guitar textures and violins and some loops uh, that just sort of groove underneath the tracks. Um, and then I added um, a great deal of background, lush background vocals in addition to my lead vocals. I wanted to make it soulful at the same time honoring the bolero style. Um, so the, 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 the Latin jazz and the soul uh, is coming from my heart that I'm putting onto this record. And then, uh, I, I, and then I, I'm able to still present the song as, as, as a true bolero. I've just taken a lot of liberties and make them a little more delicious. I wanted to take my time. These are gems of songs, and I very much wanted to insert my sensibility, my musical style, uh, but at the same time be 100% respectful of the bolero. So I, I really took my time with assembling tracks. I would literally just start with an acoustic guitar and a percussion, and I would just get a sense of groove, and if this is going to feed me into thinking what can I do next and so then I would experiment with a keyboard part and I would experiment with some rumba and I would experiment with some reggaeton and I would experiment with um, some licks, some soul licks in an, an acoustic guitar that you normally wouldn't be playing bolero style but it it fit the groove, it fit, it fit the structure that I was laying down. And then I also wanted to take harmonic liberties with the songs. They are beautiful, simple songs, and yet I felt that I could expand them musically. Um, so what were once these two, two and a half minute songs are now these five and six minute sort of musical journeys where I go into these reggaeton breaks and I go into these uh, thick background vocal call and answer and I go into these salsa grooves and I always end up returning back to the, the bolero as, as we fade out to, to black, to nothing. And um, it was a process that took a tremendous amount of time 
so that I never really truly got away from the bolero. But it's always about layers and layers and layers. And each song took uh, a couple of months to get right before I was happy. I've been very lucky in my career to uh, be able to work on many different projects in film and television and records. Um, I have been incredibly fortunate to have had the opportunity to write and produce songs with my wife, my co-writing, songwriting partner and producing partner, who's also the producer, co-producer on this album. Um, I've just been very, very, very lucky and very fortunate to have uh, been able to uh, been offered opportunities to work in many different areas. This project is perhaps what I'm most proud of at this point in my life and in my career because it's given me the ability to take everything that I've learned and synthesize it into a way where I can express gratitude um, to the life that my mom has given me, to the music that she has exposed me to, and also um, to express to people what an important figure she was in music. And I've never really found myself professionally in a position where I could accomplish so much with one project. Um, so this is perhaps uh, the most important thing I've done to date, and certainly what I'm most proud of, without a doubt. I hope you enjoy it. You know, the, one of the great things about this video, I mean, beyond concept and everything, is just the opportunity of being able to work with David Lawrence. Um, it came about that we share the same publicist, Mariluz Gonzalez, which is an amazing person that I've known for five years, has been every step of the way. And one day she calls me up and says that David Lawrence, this amazing singer, has just done this new recreation, reimagining of his mother's song, which is a famous song called Sabor a Mi. And when she's sending me the music, uh, I remember that first day I listened to it and I, it gave me a chill and I went to my dad. My dad's like, this is amazing. This is, you know, the music that I grew up with, with your grandmother grew up with. And we just kind of started cherishing it and just having that conversation of, between father and son. And I think that's what really gave me the heart to want to be part of this project. And plus the, the grand opportunity that David even wanted me to be part of it was that connection. And, you know, eventually when I talked to David, you know, I started to share this stuff with him and we just had these kind of conversations that, you know, there was a sense of, of knowing each other and that we had common ground about family, the importance of those things, about his mom and the dedication and the love that he wanted to transmit in just terms that, you know, family is the most important thing in life and, you know, film is great and being able to, you know, do that is separate, but being able to combine two things to have a spirit like David and just being able to try to portray something that would give justice to his mom and to him because he did this incredible recreation of it. And, you know, I, I hope that the idea that we had that comes into the image translates that. And I think it was a journey of making it because I got an opportunity to meet uh, David's uh, amazing wife, Faye. And just every time we, you know, we would go back and forth on scripts, you know, new ideas would pop up and it became something so organic. This great song, Sabor Me, sung by David Lawrence, is probably one of the I want to say it's going to go down as one of my favorite music videos. Again, going back to about the whole family part, the tradition and everything, and bringing something so important to a lot of people in my culture that it's going to be resonating. And I, I'm just so excited to the moment that you get to see it and get to hear it because I think it's something really special. And thank you to everybody for being part of this project, and thank you. <laughs> Me. The video is, it really takes place in, a, in an old vintage uh, club venue. Uh, somewhere uh, Edie Gourmet, David's mother, might have played back in the day. Uh, of course, it's a much more intimate setting, very romantic, very ethereal. It's, it's really the story of a young man who uh, gets called into this magical place and when he comes in he discovers this old uh, setting and he encounters this young woman uh, they have a brief exchange and much like the song Sabor a Mi, a really romantic kind of exchange between two lovers so it's nothing really substantial it's more about the sabor right the flavor so it's 
you, you leave somebody with an essence of yourself. And that's really what uh, the director, Carlos Hurtado, the vision he had was to capture the idea of the song and the beauty of this, of this, uh, of this dance and this romance between two lovers and, and leaving that essence behind. So we finished the video in one day, amazing, right? Okay, so the last scene is I finish my song and I come to the bar and the bartender says, nice show, kid, uh, which is a nice thing to say, except I happen to be his kid. That's my dad, Steve Lawrence, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, I heard your album would be terrific. Yeah. <laughs> but, hey, what do I know? I don't know about everybody. No, you know everything. When you, when you, first time you heard it, it made you cry, right? Yeah. Right? We yeah. all thought of mom and how special it was. Yeah, it really was special, David. Yeah, well. But this, it really well, was. I did it for you and I did it for mom. So I know she's I happy it. and I know you're happy. I was thrilled. Yeah, well, thank you, Dad. I I'm love moved. you, Dad. I was moved. I did. I'm very happy, Dad. I, did. I, did. I love you, Dad. Mwah. When, shortly after David's mom passed away, we were sitting and talking about ways to honor her and we had a brief conversation very early on that obviously it would be something musical david's musical his mom was an incredible singer and we talked and we talked and i looked at him one day and said what about your mom's spanish stuff because one of the things that had been drilled into us over the course of our years together was what an incredible legacy she had left with her spanish albums and how she was adored in that market and David speaks Spanish, and David loves that music, and it suddenly seemed that that was a way in to salute his mom's legacy in a way that would be unexpected. And that's how we landed on the idea of doing the Spanish catalog. Also in terms of how we got the collaborators to work on the project, I thought that was, was great. Oh, man. Because David was very clear he wanted other people to work with. Originally, he just wanted to bring in a demo singer to help sort of figure out where another voice might be, where a female voice might be. And we went to see uh, the musical version of Enter Laughing, which was done here in Los Angeles. And there was uh, an incredible woman in the show, great singer, really beautiful and wildly talented. And at intermission, I read her bio. And in her bio, it said she sang with a Cuban band, and she sang with this percussive orchestra, and she sang with this Spanish thing. And I said to David, you can't tell on stage, because that's a beautiful blonde woman on stage. But I have a feeling that She's this woman is a Latina, and that she would be a great uh, voice to bring into the studio, basically to play with. And we happened to know the musical director, and we called him, and he spoke to her. And it was Janet Tikal. And initially, she came really just for someone to David to experiment with in terms of vocal lines that might sit on a female singer. But she became an essential part of the album, oh, um, an in incredible collaborator, incredible talent. She's been on Broadway and in the Heights. Uh, she was in Prince of Broadway. She's, she's incredible talent, but even more than the incredible talent she brings in terms of her singing, she is every bit as nice a human being oh, she's as... An angel as she is a talent and, and was a joy to work with. And that's the first person David sort of brought into the project. And then we went to see an Arturo Sandoval concert at a theater in our area. And he brought in a bunch of performers that he was mentoring. And there was this extraordinary woman who sang like an angel and then picked up a trumpet and played it like, well. Like a master. Like a master, that's exactly right. And it didn't seem right you should be able to sing that well and play the trumpet, it seemed only fair you should be able to do one yeah. of those that well. And David made contact with her, that was Linda Brezegna, and she was well, a- Well, plug for Linda, also, she's the first female ever to win a Producer of the Year Latin Grammy, so it's, she's broken serious ground. And, and once again, as, as kind and nice a person as she is talented, and that shook things up a little bit in a great way in terms of the album. And then when you brought the guitarist in. Yeah, for Amor. Mm -hmm. um, the last song on the album, um, it was really clear that we had kind of checked all the boxes of th things being different and um, we had done it successfully and we were really, really sure the last song, Amor, needed to just be guitar and voice um, for many reasons. It's, it's at the end, of the, um, the end of the song, I tell my mom that I love her and thank you. And it just seemed to be mo most poignant if it was just guitar and vocal. And everything before it is, is actually 
much more fully produced. And um, I reached out uh, to Ramon, uh, who is uh, a master in his own co uh, career and in his own right, Ramon Stagnaro, and uh, coincidentally lives down the street from us. And um, I wrote up a chart, and he killed it. I mean, he just, uh, he just brought amazing artistry to his guitar playing on Amor. And so we're very lucky to have uh, those three artists um, flesh out, more than flesh out, fill in uh, the record. Uh, and to put the finishing touches on it, uh, the um, world famous Al Schmidt, you know, recording engineer, mixing engineer. Um, and who also had worked with David on an album that he produced for his father and then had worked with David's parents back in the 1960s yeah, yeah. when everybody was starting their careers. Yeah, so that the, My parents got a Grammy on an album, Two on the Isle, I think, mm -hmm. that he uh, mixed uh, and engineered. So it, it was like all full circle to get Al involved. And then we went to Capitol Studios where my family's recorded and Al has recorded. And it just felt like uh, everything was falling into place. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was an amazing process. It took a long time, but... I think it's worth it. Absolutely.